Hi, my name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT. Here is what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The Wachusett Food Pantry is looking for volunteers for the winter season. Volunteers will be asked to help sort and distribute food. For more information, visit their website www.wfp1995.org. The Wachusett Toastmasters, number 7677, meet every Thursday at the Thayer Memorial Library from 7 to 8.30 p.m. This group helps people develop speaking and leadership skills. For more information, visit the library's website at www.thayermemoriallibrary.org. The winter parking ban is in effect. This means that you are not allowed to park on the street between midnight and 6 o'clock in the morning for longer than an hour. If you have questions about the parking ban, please call your local police department. I'm Lex Thomas, editor of Sterling Meeting House News, and I am proud to be here in the First Church Parish Hall behind me a stage which for the first time will be open for a winter production for Sterling Theatre, Community Theatre's production of War of the Worlds, and here is the guy that's making it all happen. <laughs> Bob Hill, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Tell me a little bit about the production. Well, this is the first time we've ever done a winter show, and it's a dessert and coffee show, so it's very special. And it's strictly a radio show that was produced in 1938, uh, headed by Orson Welles, based on the H.G. Wells book written in 1897, of the Martians attacking the, the world. and. It's been played many, many times around the world, and it's been made into a movie, but the classic radio show is what we're doing from 1938, and it's a small cast of nine people, and uh, it's all visual. Now, how do you adapt a radio show to something visual? How is this going to happen? <laughs> what can people expect? Well, it, it's going to look like you're in a radio studio. Uh, it's going to have old-fashioned microphones, desks, tables, and things of that nature that you would imagine you're watching the people working at a radio station broadcasting the show. And it was a show, so they, they interrupted a music show during the, the radio broadcast to make it more real or seemingly real. Um, it upset a lot of people in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it created a lot of hubbub. Um, and then there's a whole variety of, of background or backstories that they created of, of uh, the military and so on and so forth calling in and all these actors on stage will be portraying these different parts. I think what you said about the, uh, the panic that arose when this was first <laughs> broadcast is very real. The other thing too, because we're looking at a different generation, one of the things that occurs to me is how many of us even still have a radio in our homes? <laughs> and so, you know, between, of course, the wonderful Orson Welles and the writing, and uh, I think this is absolutely set to be set to be marvelous. Tell us how we can get tickets. Okay. Tickets are easy to come by. You just go to our website at sterlingtheater.com and or you can send us an email at sterlingtheater.gmail.com. Uh, the easiest way is to go online and do it. There's a limited number of tickets. Seating for each show is only 72 people. So it's, like I said, it is a dessert and coffee venue. We're having special desserts made by a private individual. And uh, it's just, we're trying to make a special winter outing that and, we can do again. And what are the dates? The dates are the 19th, 20th, and 21st. The 19th and 20th are Friday and Saturday evening starts at 7.30, and Sunday the matinee starts at 2 o'clock. And is this something that's appropriate for all ages? It is definitely appropriate for all ages. I'm not sure that many children would be able to grasp the idea that it's so, something so simplistic. There's no whiz-bang in the show at all. So it's, it's more tailored towards adults. Um, we're assuming we're going to get a, a, a large proportion of older adults that uh, could possibly even remember hearing sure. this originally. Yes. So, Bob, congratulations with this. I think this sounds like a wonderful project, and <laughs> all the best. So you Thank can you so get much. tickets online 
of February 19th, 20th, and the 21st are the dates. Please come out and support Sterling Community Theatre in this wonderful project. There will be a Lancaster Special Town Meeting on February 9th at 7 p.m., location to be determined. One of the main topics for discussion will be the Minuteman Regional High School and additional money for the Prescott Building Project. For more information, visit the website at www.ci.lancaster.ma.us. The Town of Sterling is seeking eager volunteers to help fill the open spots on boards and committees in town. For a list of open positions and how to apply, visit the Sterling website, www.sterling-ma.gov. The presidential primary is fast approaching. If you are unsure of your voter status or you're going to be out of town and need an absentee ballot, be sure to check in with your town clerk. It may be winter, but we're still thinking about beautiful plants. We're still enjoying plants from the Garden Club Holiday Show and looking forward to what the Garden Club has coming up. I'm here with Pat Thomas. She is past president of the Sterling Garden Club. She is co-chair of the holiday sale and chair of the plant sale. And Pat, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much. And I understand that this year's uh, holiday sale, which took place in December, was a resounding success. It definitely was, yes. We uh, had very many pre-orders, much more than we had last year, and we sold just about everything out, and we, our actual profits were over $1,000 more than last year. Now, what happens to those profits? Well, it, it's all fundraising. We are a nonprofit. So the profits, we, we put them into partially into the civic responsibilities we have in Sterling. We take care of the common, the, um, the trough of the common. We take care of Crazy Corner over 62 and Route 12, um, which is, now has the holiday decorations on it, as you see. Uh, we also take care of Stillwater Farm, which is a DCR property up on Route 140. And also the fence along Main Street, we decorate that uh, on the, for the winter and the spring. And we're, and we're always thinking and looking for new pro projects too for the club. Now not only are you looking for new projects, but I understand you're also looking for new members and yes. interested in welcoming new people to the club. Tell me a little bit about how the club works and how people can get involved. Well, very often people are afraid to come to the club because they say they don't know anything about plants. And actually, most people are in that situation. And when you come, you learn. You learn mm -hmm. so much about plants, particularly participating in the plant sale, and where you dig, dig plants and, and label plants and sell plants. But um, we also have speakers. Next month, uh, we're, in, we're in February, we're having a woman who's going to do the history of the tulip. Interesting. Um, Isla mm -hmm. Cox. She's a Massachusetts native, and she's a um, horticulturist, plus a flower arranger, and she's going to tell the whole history. Particularly, it has a very interesting history. I, I was surprised to learn. And there was, at one time, something called tulip mania, and that was in the 17th century, in the Dutch Golden Age, mm -hmm. where a bulb was priced so high, you, it could be 10 times the annual salary of a craftsman. Really? And that they consider our first bubble. And so she's going to explain all of that and the economic impact, of course, for Holland on tulips. And uh, that's at our February meeting, which is February 18th, mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. We have our meetings on Thursday morning at the First Church, in, generally in the Houghton Room, sometimes in Room 2. And uh, we have speakers very often. Other times we have activities that within the club to get ready for the plant sale. We make plant tags for the pictures of the plants. Also to get ready for the green sale, we come together and we make all the bows that go on the, mm -hmm. the wreaths and the arrangements. And so in, in general, when people come to be a member, then they come to the meetings every month and then they participate on committees. 
Mm -hmm. And that is the way that they get to know each other well. Sure, and, and build their knowledge, I imagine. Right. You know, right. Now, what time are the meetings? 9.15 on Thursday morning. Thursday mornings. And they go roughly till about noon, a right. little bit less, right. probably. And those meetings are also, we make sure that we always run that in our bits and pieces section of Sterling Meeting House News, so people can always see that as right. well. Um, and how, the public is always invited to participate. Right, right. Now, if somebody is uh, interested as a result of this to get involved, uh, what should they do? Can they call you? Can they email? What, uh, what's the process? Yes. Or just simply come to a meeting? Certainly. Either way, they can call me. Um, my phone is 422-3566. And then also they could go on our website, mm -hmm. which is a little complicated. Uh, GCFM for Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts mm -hmm. dot org slash Sterling Garden Club. Now, is it possible to be a member without necessarily attending a lot of oh, meetings? Yes. Because 9.15, that's, you know, sometimes for families, that's not a convenient time for working people. Right. Um, how, would, how would that work? Could, yeah. could well, one still be it, a member? Yes, there are actually several members, people that work, who mm -hmm. are not able to come to the meetings, mm -hmm. but they participate in all the information gathering, they participate in our fundraisers in the plan sale and the green sale, mm -hmm. and um, waiting, some of them waiting till they retire so they can participate more fully. But we are um, talking and thinking about having a couple of evening meetings mm -hmm. over in the, the next year, and uh, certainly we will publicize that if we, sure. when, when we are going to do that. And that would be delightful to have people who are working or have sure. families to come to a, the evening meeting to enjoy it. And we will have a speaker at that time and introduce ourselves to them. And what's the next thing you're looking forward to with the Garden Club? Or as a gardener personally, what are you <laughs> looking spring. forward to? Spring, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, but it's time now for the plant sale. Sure. So we, we're starting in February before I have our first plant sale meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we have to everything that goes into organizing a sale like that. And what we do is every member donates 20 plants mm -hmm. to the sale from their gardens. And we sell them. We have about a thousand plants there. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just wonderful because they're all, they're all plants that are grown here. They're, they're mostly all perennial. Mm -hmm. They are grown right here so we know that they will survive here and sure. do very well. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so we, we do that, and then the, we have it on the morning. It's, it's going to be Saturday, May 21st this year, which is a little bit later because of the calendar. And um, all the plants show up on the common at 7 o'clock in the morning, and at 9 o'clock the, the sale opens, and uh, everyone comes in, and, and we sell most everything in a very short period of time. Something it's, it's to look forward it is. to. It Thank is. you so much for joining me, Pat. You're and welcome. remember, you can get information on the club's website or at sterlingmeetinghousenews.com. The Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative will be holding a meeting titled Look Who's Talking, Exploring Point of View in Fiction, February 20th at 10.30 a.m. in the Thayer Memorial Library. For more information, contact the library at 978-368-8928. The American Legion Hiram O. Taylor Post 189 in Sterling will be hosting a meat raffle February 21st from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Eight Point Sportsman's Club. Wachusett Music Series presents singer-songwriter Kieran McNally February 13th at 7 p.m. in the First Church in Sterling. For more information, visit the website www.wachusettmusic.net. The United Way of Tri-County is seeking nominations for the 2016 Metro West Volunteer of the Year Award. Two volunteers will be recognized at the United Way's annual recognition breakfast. The deadline to nominate is February 12th. You can do so by going to www.uwotc.org slash nominate. I'm Rebecca Powers and that's what's happening. If you have a local event you'd like to see on this program, contact SLCT. SLCT is looking for more volunteers to help with filming and editing. If you know someone interested, have them contact us at 978-733-1139 or email slc.tv810 at gmail.com. We'd like to remind you to find us on Facebook and YouTube.